When it comes to Tokyo Ghoul, there's one specific subject that leads us always in awe and wondering what's actually going on behind the scenes. Bringing us to the question, who is the king? Or to be more precise, who is the one-eyed king? With the one-eyed king being a staple throughout the world of Tokyo Ghoul, nevertheless, he would become a beacon of hope to all ghouls alike and would act as the leader to Algiri Tree, which would be a cult-like organization with a full-fledged ideal hell-bent on making it so that society is shaped in a way so that ghouls can live in peace and prosperity. If you are a ghoul, nine times out of 10, you would be on the side of Algiri. The One-Eyed King would inevitably be an unseen force that would dictate Algiri's every single move in order to enact terrorist attacks in the name of ghoul kind. And of course, with such a powerful influence, it's only natural that with just the name of the One-Eyed King alone, he would be able to change the lives of thousands. Even if those individuals had nothing to do with reshaping society altogether. You see, some of our earliest examples of this really just reside in the possibility of having one eye. With that simple fact alone, your life would no longer be the same, just by simply having one eye. This would all be due to the mystery that surrounds the One-Eyed King as a whole. No one could say for certain who the One-Eyed King really is. And so, this would lead most people to believe that anyone with one eye could possibly be the One-Eyed King. And in order to stress this, we have plenty of examples. For one, we have Kaneki. The fact that Kaneki has one eye gets him into trouble more often than you actually think it would. Even Kaneki's allies at Onteku think of the possibility of Kaneki being the king. And what makes this all the more confusing is the very fact that these characters are also aware of Kaneki's ignorance to the world of ghouls. With that being said, Yoshimura and Yomo know Kaneki personally, so they're able to come to their own conclusion and realize that he's not the One-Eyed King, yet other ghouls and members of the CCG would not share that same perspective because, of course, they wouldn't know Kaneki personally. And like I said earlier, with just the name of the One-Eyed King alone, people who are uninvolved could just be affected in the worst way possible. And this might actually be the case for Kaneki. Yoshimura acknowledges that Kaneki would be in danger for people mistaking him for being the One-Eyed King. And a sole motivation for Kaneki's torture would be the very fact that Yamori had an interest in seeing whether or not a one-eyed ghoul is hard to crush. In doing so, the connection here would be the one-eyed king's one eye and Kaneki's one eye. Yamori had selected Kaneki specifically for his torture because he wanted to test his strength. Now, if a one-eyed ghoul could not live through the torture that Yamori had experienced, in Yamori's mind, this would mean that he is the strongest. If someone who has the possibility of being the one-eyed king cannot handle the same torture that Yamori has been through, then this would mean that he might even have the possibility of being stronger than the king, which only fulfills his belief of the strong having the right to do everything they want simply because they are strong. Which brings the question, could Yamori be a king in his own right with strength alone? In the grand scheme of things, it's actually possible, which speaks to the true identity of who the One-Eyed King is. There are also even more contenders for being the One-Eyed King outside of just Kaneki, because of course, he isn't the only character that has one eye. And the plot would thicken even more when trying to figure out who the leader of Algiri is, because most would believe that the One-Eyed Owl would be the One-Eyed King. And of course, like before, this touches upon the similarities between having one eye. The one-eyed owl would roam the streets, and because it had one eye, people would naturally draw the connection between the owl and the one-eyed king. Especially when the owl has the strength to back up any association it has with the king. With just the owl's strength alone, you would think that it would have the right to carry the mantle as the king and leader of Algiri. What makes this so confusing when it comes to finding out who the One-Eyed King is, is the very fact that there are two owls that are thought to be the One-Eyed King. But it turns out that one of the owls does not actually have 
one eye, while the other one actually does. Which creates confusion for not only the owls, but also the identity of the one-eyed king, because the list of possible candidates for the one-eyed king just begins to increase even more, and it makes it so that it's so much harder to recognize who the king really is. Yoshimura pretends to have one eye because of the mask he wears, and this causes people to not only think that he is the one-eyed king, but also the owl. But he is neither because he doesn't really have one eye. Yoshimura is intentionally confusing everyone by only showing one of his eyes. In doing so, not only does he confuse people with the identity of the one-eyed owl, but he also confuses people with the identity of the one-eyed king. It just so happens that Yoshimura's daughter Edo happens to also be the owl and the one-eyed king. At least, that's what we would initially think. Yoshimura was a fake owl so that he could protect his daughter. Now what does this say about Edo in this situation? What is her true role in the grand scheme of things? Edo is the one-eyed owl and many people would think that the one-eyed owl is the one-eyed king because both have one eye, but she would not be the one-eyed king. The one-eyed king would be the identity of a person that was hidden in plain sight. To help you understand, Yoshimura was a fake owl for his daughter. However, this would lead to him being a fake king as well, due to his one eye, while his daughter would be the fake one-eyed king for someone else entirely, with that person being Arima. The name of the One-Eyed King was the perfect way in order to keep the identity of the One-Eyed King a secret for so long. When you really think about it, everything begins to truly make sense. From the moment Jason decided to torture Kaneki to determine whether or not he was stronger than a One-Eye, would show the connection as to why he would want to kill the One-Eyed King, because the One-Eyed King is the strongest, at least they should be, and Arima is just that. So it only makes sense for him to be the king because he's the strongest. Because with so much strength, no one would even dare to question him. In turn, Edo and Arima would simply want to change the world arguably for better or for worse, but you could really just notice that Arima was most likely sick and tired of killing people. And the only way for this to stop would be for ghouls and humans to coexist, which would be the true intention behind Algiri Tree, rather than using ghouls and putting them on a pedestal over human beings. The ambition of Algiri would change and they would fight to keep a balance between humans and ghouls alike. The most interesting aspect about it all is that Arima was simply a placeholder as the One-Eyed King and everything was actually designed for Kaneki to specifically fulfill this role from the very beginning of the story. It is said that the world changes whenever a One-Eyed Ghoul shows up and little did anyone know that Kaneki was actually the One-Eyed King from the start. With Algiri's cult-like roots, it's only natural for the One-Eyed King close to or even similar to anything like a prophecy, which would shape Kaneki out as a savior, and this would all be due to Arima training Kaneki and preparing him to inevitably become the One-Eyed King. This is Kaneki's role throughout the entire story, throughout Tokyo Ghoul Re, because after all, Re means king, and in this section of Tokyo Ghoul, Kaneki would inevitably finally take his throne as the king. Yeah.